Welcome. This week you will learn how to solve the differential equation associated to a mass at the end of a vibrating spring. Hooke's law tells you that the spring exerts a force F equals minus C times Y, where Y is the displacement of the spring from equilibrium. Newton's second law of motion then tells you that this force equals F equals M times A, where A is the acceleration, which is the second derivative Y double prime of the displacement. Thus, we obtain the differential equation M Y double prime equals the total force equals minus C times Y. Note that this equation contains a second order derivative of the unknown function y. For this reason, the equation is called a second order differential equation. In practice, there are more forces at work in this situation. In particular, friction and or an external driving force. Friction can, for small speeds, be modeled as the friction force equals minus gamma times the speed where the speed equals the derivative y prime of y. We make the standard assumption that the external force does not depend on the location of the mass. This gives the equation m times the second derivative of y plus gamma times the derivative of y plus c times y equals the driving force. This equation is called a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients. For now, we make the simplifying assumption that there is no driving force. But we want to look for a method that solves this equation in which we can later add the driving force. So far, we have not yet solved second order differential equations. So, to get an idea for how to solve this equation, let us first have a look at first order differential equations of the form a times y prime plus b times y equals zero, in which a and b are constants. This equation is both separable and linear, so we know how to solve it. Solving it as a linear equation, we will try to find the integrating factor. Dividing by a, we obtain y prime plus b over a times y equals zero, so the integrating factor is e to the power the integral of b over a dt which is just e to the power b over a times t. This gives that the derivative of e to the power b over a times t times y equals zero, so e to the power b over a times t times y is a constant, and y is set constant times e to the minus b over a times t. The solutions are exponential functions with a proper constant in the exponent. Once we realize that the solutions are exponential functions, we can use this to more easily determine this constant in the exponent. Indeed, assume y equals to e to the rt is a solution for some r. How can we determine r? Just plug this tentative solution into the equation. As y prime equals r times e to the rt, we obtain a times r e to the rt plus b e to the rt equals zero. Exponentials are non-zero, so we can divide this entire equation by e to the rt to obtain a r plus b equals zero, which is easily solved as r equals minus b over a. Thus, e to the minus b over a t is a solution. This has given us one solution, but there are more. If we multiply y by a constant, say 2, the derivative y prime is also multiplied by this constant 2. So the entire equation a y prime plus b y equals 0 is multiplied by this constant. Therefore, the equation remains valid and hence every multiple of a solution is another solution. We thus arrive at the conclusion that y equals c times e to the minus b over a t for any constant c is a solution to the original equation. 
The intermediate equation AR plus B equals zero is called the characteristic equation for this linear differential equation. Let us now return to our goal of solving the second order differential equation m y double prime plus gamma y prime plus c times y equals zero. We'll consider the example where m equals one, gamma equals four, and c equals three. Thus, y double prime plus four y prime plus three y equals zero. Let us try to find the solution of the form y equals e to the rt. Then y prime equals r e to the rt, and y double prime equals r squared e to the rt. Plugging this into the equation gives r squared e to the rt plus 4r e to the rt plus 3 e to the rt equals zero. As e to the rt is non-zero, we can divide by it to obtain r squared plus 4r plus 3 equals zero. This is a quadratic equation in R, so we know how to solve it. It is called the characteristic equation for this differential equation. In this case, we can factor this expression to r plus 3 times r plus 1 equals 0. So the solutions are r equals minus 3 and r equals minus 1. We find two solutions to the differential equation. y equals e to the minus 3t and y equals e to the minus t. And of course, constant multiples of these solutions. y is some constant times e to the minus 3t, and y is some possibly other constant times e to the minus t. Are these all solutions? In class you'll find out.